A hearty warm welcome to you, my Kisima family. We are back with Kingdom Leadership with Pastor Lutando Tofu. You know, it it is said, rather said, the time we are experiencing in our country, I'm going to focus on South African Foundation, when we display a level of uncertainty when it comes to embracing a woman or rather female president. And for me, it's challenging me to actually want to learn more about the heart of leadership. What is leadership if we are going to box it into a gender or, you know, yeah. Anyway, we're not there. We're not going to talk about that. But because we're talking kingdom leadership and reflecting on currently what is happening in our country. So I just this morning thought, you know what? Yeah. This is a challenge and we really need to be deliberate and intentional in debating the heart of leadership. Today, we're going to continue with our theme, Kingdom Leadership, unpacking a topic, Principles of Kingdom Leadership, Part 2. I was also actually taken aback by the statement made by Robin S. Shama, who states, I quote, Leadership is not a popularity contest. It's about leaving your ego at the door. The name of the game is to lead without a title. Close quote. Mm. And I think kingdom leadership, you know, is actually that leading yeah. without a title. So, <coughs> yes, Mfunisi, please welcome. Uh, we welcome you at Kisima Radio and please greet the listeners. Let me take this opportunity and greet the listeners for today's podcast. And hopefully, there will be a lot to learn. Mm. Thank you. Wonderful. In our last week's podcast, you and Ngoli tackled three of the seven principles you mentioned of kingdom leadership, uh, which were multiplication versus addition, (coughs) high potential versus low commitment, and expectation versus input. Can you, in less than two minutes, just take us through or rather highlight what was critical about those three principles before we move on to the four principles that we're going to talk about today? I think I I like your, your opening statement because it does paint a picture of what kingdom leadership looks like. Okay. And um, I think last last time we spoke about those three key principles, the first being the, the principle of multiplication versus addition. We looked at we looked at the the leader's ability to multiply himself okay. rather than looking at addition, which is just adding numbers to what you are doing. Sure. It looked at how do you embrace the commission and mandate, which is not a New Testament one, but an Old Testament mm. one, which looks at God saying we must, we must multiply. Of course, that includes in, in physical numbers, mm, as one yes. would read it, but also I think it's a, it's a, it's a profound statement of the ability of a person to regenerate themselves, their ideas, their values, their principles, and those things that make us more human. And if we take it a bit a step further, those things that make us more like Christ in this world. So I think that that's part of the base we touched on. Mm. And I would really encourage the listeners to go back to that podcast and listen more clearly on it. And the second part, the second part we looked at if I remember clearly, we looked at the principle of high potential versus low commitment. Yes. In that once you have accrued the potential of multiplying yourself, mm. obviously in kingdom leadership, we emphasize teamwork. Sure. Um, some might be leading in spaces that requires a team, not the individual. Mm. So we spoke of how then you identify individuals with, with because we, we, we spoke of not every potential can be realized. And so if you look at a person merely based on their potential, Mm. you might make a huge mistake. And we emphasize that a a high potential, high commitment person Mm. is ideal. But even preferably, if the person doesn't show much potential in the field you are looking for, rather go for a person of high commitment, mm. then you can always train the person in the skills sure. that they need to, mm. to achieve the task. Yeah. And so and so when you have the other way around you have a you have a potential um of a person that will never deliver, though they show high potential mm. Mm. because their levels of commitment are not there. 
that spoke to how you look at people to join the team yeah. that you are working with, especially if you're looking for high impact. And then the third one, we looked uh, basically at expectations versus input. And the emphasis there really was that never demand from people that which you have not invested in them. True. So rather invest first and then you can call people into order, you can call discipline. But sure. disciplining people for things you have never taught them is somehow a, a degree of abuse, mm. if I may put wow. it in yeah. that way. Wow. Um, it's just like a child. Also, you, you can't really scold a child for something you have never taught of them course. to do well. Mm. So that's a factor also in teamwork, especially if you are leading. So make sure that you maximize on your input so that you can gain quality output. So what you invest in people is as important as what you get out of people. So the, basically those were the three principles we touched based on. And so today we'll look at about four of them, which will complete our set for, for this series. Awesome. All right. Let's get straight to them um, for this. Yes. And so building on that, on those three principles, we, we, we also look at the fact that in any form of leadership, there are two things, two things that are guaranteed, is that you will have successes, you will have failures. Mm. And also you will have high times of of high achievement. You will also have dry times of very low achievement. Okay. And so the key there is to find a balance. Mm. Most people thrive in good circumstances, but do very badly in low circumstances. So I would call those low those lows your desert condition. Okay. And so the principle there I want to relate is that learn to thrive even in your desert, desert situation. Wow. Because then in doing so, you become a more well-rounded and balanced leader. Mm. Um, don't be a leader which excels only when things are favorable, but be a leader that even in situations that are not favorable to you, you learn to maximize your opportunities and succeed even in those, in, in those conditions. Mm. And part of that, which I want to speak of, is relating it to to the story in the Old Testament okay. that God called Moses and gave him a, a pattern for the temple, mm. or which was then called a tabernacle. And, and it was one to be used in the desert, and God was very quite conscious about that. The, in the actual fact, the model that was used was a tent, which was mobile. So in other words, it related that they were not meant to settle in the desert. They were just passing through. Okay. So even that the model of the tabernacle that they had to build was a temporary one, a okay. tent, which was easily movable. So mm. no desert circumstance is meant to hold you forever. Mm. So you must learn that. But the even more important lesson there is that when they eventually go to the promised land, they had to build then a temple which Solomon built. But if you look at the design of the temple that Solomon built, it was a design after the tent of tabernacle, which was used in the desert. Okay. So in other words, the pattern that uh, Solomon used in building the temple was a pattern developed and formed in the desert. Wow. So often leaders are God will push you into desert situations mm. for you to reinvent new ways okay. and create new solutions, sure. which will then be implemented further in the promised land. It's hardly that new patterns are developed in uh, are land. developed in the promised land. Sure. Mind you, what makes you stand out as a leader amongst the crowd is your ability to solve problems. And so when you encounter problems, they do tend to lead you into a desert situation mm. because you're not, you're not achieving high results when you encounter problems. You are in a desert situation where you need to formulate new mm. ways of thinking mm. and new ways of innovation and so forth. And I'm so thinking, when you learn... Mm. Now I'm just sorry. thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm imagining <clears throat> a desert situation uh, or someone in a desert situation whereby... It affects you negatively, emotionally, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and you, you actually struggle at times to even think creatively because mm -hmm. it depends on the attitude of the individual, you know. Yes. Yes. And some might feel lonely. Some might feel, you know what, yeah, abandoned around me and uh, I need support and so and so is not there and you find that it actually it is a deliberate move for you to be in that space 
so yeah. that exactly what you're saying, what needs to be cultivated in me can actually yes. yeah, be done, be achieved. Yeah, because what it then teaches you is for you to learn to reflect more mm. on what's happening in you. In me. I, I always relate that it's it's really not what is happening around you that matters the most. It's what's happening in you. And if you learn to build a capacity within yourself to not be moved by your circumstances in any situation, not that you become a hardcore person that doesn't feel. Sure. Um, emotional intelligence is important, and that's what we are talking about. Mm. Learning to control your emotions in any environment and learning to optimize your, your, your emotions to, your best, to the best of your ability. So that as and, an entrepreneur, even if a business does not come in, that should mm. not shake me to a point where even my family can feel that, Ish, yeah, I'm moved now emotionally, like I'm not stable emotionally because yes. I'm worried about a business that's not doing well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And worst case scenario, you walk away, mm. basically, um, because you feel it's too much mm. um, for you to handle. And, and so that's exactly what we are talking about sure. in that learn to master your desert situation. Let's also you learn to master yourself, but then you become aware, you become conscious, more mm. conscious of your surroundings sure. and the possibilities of the, your surroundings, even in those situations, sure. such that you are able to maximize. And it's a hard thing. It's not an easy thing. Mm. It's something that needs to be worked both in your character and your emotions. And so one of the other examples I would give is that, oh, David, the man we, we know and love so much, he, he was not the ideal candidate for kingship, such that he, he was even not considered by his own family that mm. he had any potential or ability to lead anything other than the ship that he was thrown into. And, and so he was forced to go and... Uh, and to his father's ship in the wilderness, amongst the animals, amongst the cold, amongst all of those things. So he, his environment was not necessarily conducive to his success, but then that environment was formed and shaped his form of worship, his form wow. of thinking, his mm. perspective. And that's where he even learned that he had the capability to kill bears and lions, to rescue sheep out of the mouth of a lion. And he developed all of that in his desert situation, such that when he encountered Goliath, it was a piece of cake for him. And hmm. So his, his effort in killing Goliath affirmed who he was in the eyes of Israel. But his personal affirmation happened in the, in the desert when he killed bears and lions to rescue the sheep. So wow. that's where his training happened. And sure. so the pattern he formed in his ability to, to kill bears in the desert is what he then used to kill Goliath in the battlefield. And so it's never a waste when you go through such conditions sure. and learn to master them. Mm. So that's the first principle I wanted to relate. Okay. The second one is that learn to create your own opportunities. That does include even you know desert conditions learn to create your own opportunities. Most people wait for opportunities to come their way mm. or for people or even we pursue we pursue some relationships even for that matter in hope that they will open opportunities sure. for us. But what the kingdom mindset teaches us is that we're made in the image of God. Mm. God the creator, he created everything and he made us in his own likeness. So in other words, we have the trait of being creators in our own right because we are made after God's image. Okay. So as kingdom leaders, we are the people, we are the kind of people who, who should be looking for opportunities to create. And as much as we, we will find opportunities to, to maximize, but we need to find opportunities that we can create sure. for the benefit of others mm. and even for the benefit of advancing what God has called us into. Don't sit and wait for somebody or some situation to create opportunities for you. Maximize what is already in front of you and, and use that to the best of your ability mm. because you have been designed to be a creator as after the image of God, our Creator, and so that's a very key. That's a very key one. Some people will wait for people to invite them to speak or whatever, whatever. Sure. But my principle that I'm I'm wanting to convey in that is that learn to create your own opportunities. Beautiful. In so doing, you you create a, you you open doors for others. So don't be reactionary in mm. your approach. Mm. Be creative in your approach. Sure. So the third the third one. The third one is to understand the purpose 
and power of time. Okay. And that time is your friend. Time is your enemy. In so saying, time, most people, most people rush things, most people do things and, and so forth because they think that time is running out yeah. for them. Mm. Um, and so what I'm wanting for people to understand is that time is your friend. No matter how hurried you are, no matter um, how how gifted you are, mm. you often do need time because one of the things that time does is that time tests your character. Okay. So time tests your own personal character. And often I, I like to... to convey this to young leaders who I'm still not sure about um, their calling or are pressurized. Mm. They want to do things immediately. They want to achieve high things now. Yes. And for me, it's always a matter of time. Can you submit to time? Sure. Because time will test your character if you, are, if you have the endurance mm. to do what you need to do. Yes. Time will tell. And, and, and so if you give enough time, um, it not only tests your own character, but it also tests the character of people around you okay. and people you want in your team. So time is important for you, but also time is important for you to use on others. Now, to use time on others is that when people come into your atmosphere, people come into your environment, whether they are here to, to benefit out of you mm. or they are there to invest in you, Time always has the ability to test. And some people are just there because they are wanting to take an advantage. Of course. And you feel that this person, as we were indicating earlier on, this person is high potential. <laughs> but time will help you test their level of commitment. commitment. Wow. And so when you allow time, say for an example, you give the person three months to a year, that has enough time to for you to see whether they... They are, they are invested in the vision or they are invested in what you are trying to achieve. Sure. So only don't never feel pressured to give people positions or whatever. Give them time, rather. Mm. It's, a, it's a best gift for any person who comes into your environment. Your first best gift to them is time. Give mm. them time uh, sure. so that you can be able to know how best to serve them yes. or to let them go, sure. even. So there's also that. So time tests your character, mm. and time also tests your intention. Of course. And that's the other sure. part. So intentions are very important to God. God is very uh, obsessed with intentions, mm. if I may put it that way. Yeah. So whenever you've got a new idea, great idea, whatever, give it time, mm. because it will test whether you have your heart in the right place. Sure. Time will always test your intentions. If your intentions were never good, time will expose that. Mm. Uh, mm. Or the intentions of others, were they ever good or were they ever bad, mm. time will always test that. So that's the second thing sure. that time tests. And then the third thing is that time will test your resolve. Mm. Your resolve is basically the same as your commitment. Sure. Sometimes you start something on a very high note, you, you sense a fire in you, you want to do it and all of that. But when you give it enough time, um, say at the end of a year, you're already now wanting to pack up and go. Hmm. That's your resolve. Were you, ever, were you ever committed in this thing? Yeah. Time will test that for you. Or was it ever genuine? Some people even need time to test whether they made the right decision. And, and, and so you must understand mm. that time is True. never your enemy. Time is your friend. Use it wisely. Allow it to work you, but also have developed the ability to use time to your advantage. Sure. So the last point then I want to to speak of is that the depth of your character is proven by your level of consistency. So when we again go back to the issue of character as a leader. Mm. One of the critical things is your ability to be consistent. Yes. And so your consistency in your character, just like we, we just spoke now about resolve, your cons consistency tells what kind of leader you are. So when you're wanting to build a reputation mm. around your leadership, some people who can will, will, will call it ma many different things, but when we talk about a reputation, we're talking about what sticks to your name even in your absence. Okay. So consistency 
enables you to create a reputation around around your leadership that then can be sustained even beyond your present sure um, even when you are gone but this is a thing about consistency for me is that one of the things you will realize is that for people who who have who have achieved a lot one of the key things about them is their ability to be consistent in what they do. They don't start one thing, quit, start another thing, yeah. quit, start yeah. another thing, quit. You don't be a jack of all trades. Mm. Be a specialist. Find a field that you can specialize on, put all your effort and all your energy and be consistent in what you do until you see the results you need. You can diversify. I think but I think on that note, sorry, uh, mm. for this, I think it goes back to what we spoke about earlier on. I think it was the first, the first podcast. It was talking mm. about personal leadership, and yes. we were asking the questions like, "Why are you doing this?" Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. yeah, so so so, yes, so the why question. The why question. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes, and that's still this is very very important. Mm. But then when you are able to do what you do consistently, one of the things I found is that. For an example, you might start a small group of people you are leading and all of that. Sure. And you become consistent in what you do, especially when you find how you do it well. Mm. When you find a pattern of doing it well, you become consistent in that. Some people may leave your group, mm. go venture out, explore and do whatever. But then when they revert 180 degrees back to you and still find you being consistent in what you're doing, their level of respect for you automatically increases. Wow. It's not a blind, consistent way you're just doing something even when you're not seeing any results happening. But when you find your rhythm well and you're doing something consistently until you see results, mm. it eventually makes you stand out in your field. Okay. So most people who never become recognized or, or seen, imagine, imagine if Nelson Mandela had joined politics, started doing whatever it is, and, and when he, see, he encountered the threat of being thrown into jail, he changed and, and became a musician. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine. <laughs> but we celebrate him now because he was consistent yes. in what he was doing up to the point where even when he was in jail, his, his language did not change. Mm. Even when they offered him a, a release, he refused it because he was attempting to be consistent in his belief system, in his, implica- in his application, sure. and so forth. Until he got out of jail, and now we celebrate him as a legend in the political field because he was consistent in what he was doing. Hmm. So sometimes you don't have to be a, a very high skilled person. And this is a, uh, I'll throw this as a bonus to people. It's a million dollars. It's a million, <laughs> they can pay me later. But you, 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 don't, you don't necessarily have to be the highest skilled person in your field. Okay. You just need to be the most consistent because most people start things and leave them. Even the best people, you find that a, a person is highly gifted in this thing. They are more skilled than I am. They are more knowledgeable than I am, but they lack consistency. Sure. Then you outlive them, mm. not because you are more skilled, but because you are more consistent. consistent. Wow. So I think, sure. I think if, if ever you want to, to, to build a, repula- a reputation that will eventually make you a legend in your field, all you need to master is, a, is, is the principle of consistency. Wow. Sure. Amen. Sure. <laughs> right. Um, so, so those four principles. Those would be the four principles. So you learn to master your desert situation. Mm. Um, learn to create your own. Be, okay. Don't don't be on and off like sure. the weather. Yeah. Be, you ma- master even those areas or those spaces where you feel you are mm. less advantaged. Okay. Master them. They're sure. trying. Why, how, how to maximize your potential even in those areas. Mm. Number two, learn to create your own opportunities. Don't wait for people to do that for you. Stand up, do it for yourself. Create, if, if you want, if you think something that needs to be done, do it. Don't wait for somebody mm. to say, do it for you. Sure. Or come and do it for you. But, but learning to create, that's a key. Sure. Learn to create. Don't learn only to maximize opportunities you see. 
sure. but learn also the art of creating opportunity. Right. And so the third one is that time is your friend. Learn to use it well and let and learn to allow time to test your own character, intentions, and resolve. Hmm. But also learn to use time to be able to do that to people because then you'll save yourself a lot of heartache. You'll save yourself a lot of um, being discouraged by people you thought had the ability to help your vision go and move forward. Mm. And then the last part is that in whatever you find and are able to do it well, be consistent in it until you see the result. Um, Don't try and play a jack of all trades trying to touch there and there and there. Find one thing, be consistent in it until you see the result you need. So those four key principles is what I think today we will uh, um, conveying today to the listeners. Mm. Thank you once again, Mfundesi. Thank Mm. you for your time. Thank you for sitting down there and preparing and come and pour out your heart on the matters that you're very passionate about, which is kingdom leadership. And I'm hoping, you know, that even if it's just one person, one person, who gets encouraged, who learns something new and is also encouraged to go and apply so that Mm. our lives can be transformed for the better. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I don't know if you want to say one last word. No, I think I think more you than said anything, it all. <laughs> one one of the things we need to to understand and open up, uh, particularly because we are talking kingdom leadership. Is sure, there are no specific people for this. Mm. If you follow Christ, you are called into a space of leadership. I think we said this in the first podcast. If the minute you follow Christ, is the minute you become a leader, even if you are leading one person or a thousand people. So when we're talking about kingdom leadership. We're talking about you at home, at work, wherever you are. You are a leader, and these principles will help you, guide you, and develop you further. Beautiful. Kissy Marie's mandate is to facilitate the restoration of mankind back to God's original intent. I think for this, it's very important, especially at the time we live in as a generation, that we become more serious about restoring godly values and principles, you know, mm. in our leadership, mm. irrespective of the space and the environment where we are leading. So, um, yes, until we connect again next week, let's remain connected to the heart of God because he really loves us and he cares for us. Amen. Amen.